We will now discuss the National Medical Support Notice. This notice serves as legal notice that the employer identified on the document is obligated by a child support order to provide health care coverage for the children identified on the notice. This notice replaces any medical support notice that the issuing agency had previously served on you with respect to the employee and children listed on the notice. The National Medical Support Notice is divided into two parts, Part A and Part B. Part A is a notice to withhold for health care coverage and includes the employer response and instructions. Part B is a medical support notice to the plan administrator and includes the plan administrator response and instructions. The National Medical Support Notice is sent to employers from the Child Support Agency to ensure the children receive health care coverage when it is available and part of a child support order. It is designed to simplify the work of employers and plan administrators by providing uniform documents to request health care coverage. When you receive this National Medical Support Notice, you are to review the information on the National Medical Support Notice, complete the employer response, forward Part B to the plan administrator if necessary, withhold premiums as appropriate, Determine the limitations on withholding and consider the priority of withholding. Okay, let's go through the employer response and the options for completing the medical coverage. Determine whether any of the six criteria in Section 1, no enrollment possible on the employer response, apply to you or this employee that would prevent you from honoring the National Medical Support Notice. Option one is the employee named on this notice has never been employed by you. Number two is you do not offer your employees the option of purchasing dependent or family health coverage as a benefit of their employment. Option three, the employee is among a class of employees, for example, part-time or non-union, that are not eligible for health, family health care coverage under any group health plan maintained by the employer or to which the employee contributes. If the employee is only temporary ineligible for health care coverage, do not check this box. Or if the employee is no longer employed, complete the requested information. You must determine whether the amount of support obligation plus the deduction for health care premiums exceeds the maximum deduction allowed under the Consumer Credit Protection Act, or CCPA. If the amount to withhold exceeds the maximum withholding limitations, which in New York State are 50 to 55 percent, depending on whether the employee owes more than 12 weeks of child support arrears. If the amount to withhold exceeds the maximum deduction allowed, check box five and return to the form to the issuing agency. Remember, if you use the calculator and the amount in the amount to withhold section is zero, the amount to withhold exceeds the withholding limitations. Remember, if the priority of withholding is current child support, then health insurance premiums, then child support arrears. Other reasons, there's a new job, adequate, adequate coverage by a third party, or other reasons for no coverage. Check all that apply and return the form to the issuing agency. There are two options under Section 2, dependent enrollment not yet available. Option 1 is if enrollment cannot be completed until after a waiting period or other requirement, check and complete box number 7, and send Part B to the plan administrator. The plan administrator must process the enrollment at the end of that period. And the other option is the employee is on an unpaid leave of absence. Section 3, Dependent Coverage is Available. You would, you would check box number 9 and forward the Part B medical support notice to the administrator if the employer provides health care benefits to the employee. You would check box nine and forward it. 
Four, if the employee has already enrolled the children in health care coverage, the employer must forward Part B to the plan administrator for completion and submittal to the issuing agency. Or if the employee's health care benefits are administrated through another organization, including a labor union, forward Part B of the notice to the labor union or other organization acting as the plan administrator for completion. Finally, complete the contact for questions section. Are there any questions on Part A of the National Medical Support Notice? Part B of the National Medical Support Notice has been forwarded from the employer to you as the plan administrator of a group health plan maintained by the employer or a group health plan to which the employer contributes in which the employee is enrolled or is eligible for enrollment. If the plan requires that the employee be enrolled in order for the children to be enrolled and the employee is not currently enrolled, you must enroll both the employee and the children, regardless of whether the employee has applied for enrollment in the plan. All enrollments are to be made without regard to open season restrictions. The plan administrator enrolls the child in a health care plan and notifies the employer of premium cost, notifies the employee that custodial parent of the child's enrollment, and notifies the child support agency of the child's enrollment. The plan administrator must, within 40 business days of the date of this notice, or sooner if reasonable, complete Part B, the administrator response, and send it to the issuing agency, and determine if the notice is a qualified medical support order. If so, complete responses two or three and four if applicable. You would check response two if the employee and alternate recipients, the children, are enrolled in the following family coverage. The children are currently enrolled in the plan as independent of the participant. There is only one type of coverage provided under the plan and the children are included as dependents of the participant under the plan. The participant is enrolled in an option that is providing dependent coverage and the children will be enrolled in the same option. Or the participant is enrolled in an option that permits dependent coverage that has not been elected. Dependent coverage will be provided. If you checked response two, you must notify the employee and custodial parent that coverage of the children is or will become available provide the coverage effective date and furnish the custodial parent with a description of the coverage available along with a summary plan description and any forms, documents, or information necessary to effectuate such coverage, as well as information necessary to submit claims for benefits. And you must notify the employer of the cost of the health care coverage. The employer will determine if the cost is permitted under the state and federal withholding and or prioritization limits. If you checked response three, there is more than one option available under the plan and the employee is not enrolled. So you would provide the issuing agency copies of the applicable summary plan descriptions or other documents that describe available coverage, including the additional employee contribution necessary to obtain coverage for the children under each option and whether there is a limited service area for any option. If the plan has a default option, you are to enroll the children in the default option if you have not received an election from the issuing agency within 20 business days of the date you return the response. If the plan does not have a default option, you are to enroll the children in an option selected by the issuing agency. You would check response four if the employee is subject to a waiting period that expires more than 90 days from the date of the receipt of the notice or has not completed a waiting period whose duration is determined by a measure other than the passage of time. For example, the completion of a certain number of hours of employment work. Complete response four. You would return it to the employer and the issuing agency, notify the employee and custodial parent, and upon satisfaction of the period or requirement, complete 
the enrollment under response two or three. If within 40 business days of the date of the notice, or sooner if reasonable, you determine that this notice does not constitute a qualified medical child support order, you must complete the response five and send it to the issuing agency and inform the employee, custodial parent, and children of the specific reasons for your determination. And at the bottom of the plan administrator response, fill in the name, title, phone number, date, and address of the plan administrator.